Well, hello, Chelsea. We have you loud and clear. How us? Butch, that's awesome. I hear you loud and clear as well. Thank you both so much for taking the time. Uh, we have a lot of people on the phone who are very excited to talk to you, so let's jump right in. Uh, Butch and Sonny, I'll toss it back to you first so you can kick us off with some brief opening remarks. Yeah, we, we appreciate that, Chelsea. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite an evolution over the last three months. Uh, we've uh, been involved from the beginning through all the processes of assessing our spacecraft, uh, Calypso, and um, it was uh, trying at times. It was, uh, there were some tough times all the way through. You certainly, as uh, the commander and the PLT of your spacecraft, you don't want to see it go off without you, but that's where we wound up. And through all the process, uh, most of the news we heard as we would hear things uh, over the news waves and, and uh, the different means that we have to get information up here, that 80% uh, of the time you'd hear Sonny and Butch, Butch and Sonny, Sonny and Butch, Butch and Sonny. And I just want everybody to know how much we appreciate that. Uh, the concern for, for us specifically uh, is very heartwarming and, uh, like I said, much appreciated. Um, Every time I talk to someone, that hey, that we're praying for you. There's prayers coming up for me and Sonny both. Uh, street signs, people we don't even know across the nation. Uh, Sonny and Butch, we're praying for you. Come on back, all those, those things. And I, I can tell you, it, uh, it really goes a long way, and we so uh, much appreciate it. And even the opportunity to share a couple of thoughts now, I'm not sure how much we can share that you don't already know, but uh, I know you've got some questions prepared, and uh, we're ready to answer as best we can. All right, thanks so much, Butch. Let's begin the Q&A. Media on the phone, if you'd like to ask our NASA astronauts a question, please press star one on your phone to enter our question queue. We have several people dialed in today and I wanna to get to as many of you as I can, so please try to ask just one question. But we'll begin now with Gina Sinceri with ABC News. Uh, good afternoon. So uh, you're on an extended mission. Uh, you've done these before, but what are the ups and downs for you as you look forward to the rest of the mission? Well, uh, Sunny Williams has just been named the commander of uh, the space station. She'll take over in a couple of weeks. I'm going to let her start off with answering that question. So I think, you know, what we look forward to is being here and being part of the crew that's here. You know, we've been part of Expedition 71. Uh, they're a great bunch of people, and we've tried to just jump in and do whatever we can. Um, we're waiting for um, Nick's and, Nick and Alex to get up here as part of uh, Expedition 72 once we hand over. We just got Don Pettit and uh, Alexei and Yvonne here. So I mean. I mean, we're here with our friends. I think that's really a key part of being on the International Space Station and actually just doing the work. So that's, I, I think the up part is we're here with our friends. We've got a ride home. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the next couple months and doing a lot of stuff for the International Space Station. We'll go now to Marsha Dunn with the Associated Press. Um, Butch and Sonny, when you launched, you figured you'd be back home in Houston to vote on Election Day. Have you requested your absentee ballots yet so you can vote from space? If you could elaborate on this, and what else are you missing on a personal note? I sent down my request for a ballot today. As a matter of fact, uh, and they should get it to us in a couple of weeks. And absolutely, yes, uh, it's a very important uh, role that we all play as citizens is to uh, be included in those elections. And NASA makes it very easy for us to do that. So we're excited about that opportunity. And Marsha, same here. You know, it's a very important duty that we have as citizens and uh, looking forward to being able to vote from space, which is pretty cool. Um, you asked what we miss, right? Of course, you know, the things that we always miss, our families. I miss my two dogs. I miss my friends. But you know what? Like Butch said, there are so many people uh, on Earth that are sending us messages, and it, it makes you feel just right at home with everybody when we're able to have those conversations with our friends and family at home. So I know they understand. I know it's, a, it's tough on, on them as well as, you know, being away from home, of course. But uh, everybody understands, and everybody's cheering for us to get back with Crew 9. Our next question will be with Tom Costello with NBC News. Uh, hi, Butch and Sonny. Nice to see you both. Butch, I can't believe how fast your hair has grown uh, in the few months you've been up there on station. Um, can I ask you this question? I'm just wondering, uh, recognizing that you're both team players and veteran NASA astronauts, do you feel let down by Boeing and Starliner and the fact that this is clearly not something you plan for your life?
Let down? Absolutely not. Not never entered my mind. Uh, I don't think Sonny's either uh, until you mentioned it. it. It's a fair question. I, I get it. I can tell you, um, you know, I thought a lot about this press conference and what I might say, what I wanted to convey. And there's no way to convey every single piece of information that needs to be said to understand a majority of the questions that we might get asked. But I will say this, you know, Sonny's got this uh, shirt on. It's got that NASA meatball, we call it on it. And that represents uh, something that uh, we stand for as an agency. We go beyond. We do things that are out of the ordinary. We send humans to space. And yeah, we're here today on the space station. Even today, this, this operation, this is not easy. Uh, NASA does a great job, the people at NASA do a great job of making a lot of things look easy, going, sending probes beyond the edge of our solar system, uh, going and uh, getting sample from asteroids, humans in space. And it's a very risky business and things do not always turn out the way you want. Before we launched, we said, there, we're going to find things. Yep. That is the nature of test. Every single test flight, especially a first flight of a spacecraft or an aircraft that has ever occurred, has found issues. That's things you just cannot think about. 90% of our training is preparing for the unexpected. And sometimes uh, the, the actual unexpected goes beyond what you even think that could happen. And that's just the way it goes sometimes because we are pushing the edges of the envelope in everything that we do. And it is not easy. And uh, I'm grateful for the organization. I'm grateful for the people that are passionate about what they do, that we can make it look easy. We can go outside this uh, International Space Station and do uh, an EVA, a spacewalk, and things go off many times without a hitch because we, we're making it, ma making it look easy by dedicated efforts, monumental efforts on the ground and in, the, and in space here to make it look that way. And it's, uh, and it's like I said, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing to do, but that's that's not why we do it. Maybe we do it because it's hard. And pushing the envelope in, the, in a, any envelope is very difficult, regardless of where you're at. Uh, and in space is, is, is certainly the case. I'll take our next question now from Stephen Clark with Ars Technica. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Stephen Clark from Ars Technica. Uh, Butch, you mentioned this in your introduction for a moment. But both of you are veterans of the Navy, Navy captains. I just wanted to hear your thoughts from each of you on seeing your ship leave without you. Uh, what was that like, and were you uh, staying up late to watch the landing the other day? Well, um, you know, we actually had a couple duties while we were getting ready to let the Starliner depart. Uh, there's some things that the International Space Station has to get ready and, and be prepared and make sure that it understands that a visiting vehicle has undocked and it goes back to its normal regime of operating. So actually we were tasked with that. Um, we were up in the cupola and we were watching our spaceship you know, fly away at that point in time. So I think, I think it was good we had some extra activities. You know, of course, we're very knowledgeable about Star, Starliner, so it was, uh, it was obvious, you know, what was happening e at each moment. We were talking to our control team, uh, people, friends of ours that we know. We know how much time and effort that they have put into this spacecraft, the excellent and precision uh, activities that they're doing down on the ground. It was, it was nice to have that, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation over the space to ground as Starliner was leaving, uh, just knowing that she was in their hands and she, they were going to do the best that they could to get her back home. Um, other other thoughts about seeing it leave? You know, like we're like you mentioned, we're both you know Navy. We've both been on deployments. We're not surprised when deployments gets changed. I mean, our families extended. Our, our families are used to that as well. So uh, that is that's not a humongous surprise. I think, like Butch said, this is this is test. I think before we even flew, we had an interview with a, a lot of you and, and mentioned the same thing that, you know, a test flight means that we're probably going to find some stuff. We've done as much as we can uh, to look at the envelope that we're going to operate in, but this is the first time that we've had humans in space in Starliner, and we did find stuff, and, um, you know, we made the right decisions, and we're here, and that's that's how things go in, in this business, like Butch said. It's, it's risky, and that's how it goes in the business. We'll go to Joey Roulette with Reuters. We'll go to Joey. 
Hey, thank you. Um, for both of you, you know, you both have had for the past few years, you've played a very kind of intimate role in Starliner's development, which of course has not been easy for Boeing for a number of reasons. Um, and I know failures are is common in spacecraft testing, but looking back, what could Boeing have done differently in Starliner's development? That is a very interesting and a very fair question. I'll say this, there is not enough time right now to go into all the details to make any answer I think that I could, I could give uh, make complete sense. I could say a few things and it would be taken the wrong way, a way that I didn't mean it to be. So for questions like that, all that will play out. Um, uh, in the coming months. We've got lessons learned that we will go through. We will have discussions. We will be involved with those discussions. And uh, things that need to change will change. Obviously, when you have uh, an issues like we've had, there's some changes that need to be made. Uh, Boeing's on board with that. We're all on board with that. And I can tell you, um, when you push the edge of the envelope again and you do things with spacecraft that have never been done before, just like Starliner, you're going to find some things. And in this case, we found some things that we just could not get comfortable with uh, putting us back in the Starliner when we had other options. There's many cases in the past where there have not been other options. We were very fortunate that we have the space station um, and that we had the option to stay and we had the option to come back a different way if that's what the data showed. I think the data could have gotten there. We could have gotten to the point, I believe, where we could have returned on Starliner, but we just simply ran out of time because there's other tests that need to be done, and other assessments that need to be done, and had we had a little more time, then we could have done it. And why didn't we take the time? Well, it's the International Space Station. We've got seven people, seven USOS crew on board, 12 total, and we've been six on board for quite some time. And uh, to staff the space station with six people, we've done it, we've done it well, I think, over the last couple of months, but it's not prepared for that long term. And so we had to make some decisions on a timeline. And the timeline came to the point to where we had to decide, is Starlander coming back with us or without us? And we just did not have enough time to get to the end of that runway where we could say that we were going to come back with it. I think we'd have gotten there, but we just ran out of time.